What's going on guys? This is JT here. In this video, we're going to be talking about my current PvP build, explaining the entire setup, what skills I use, when I use them, why I use them at that time, also going over all the inheritances, plus also the sets that I do use. Now, if you guys do not know, it is a Furious Charge Lacerate build, where basically you see somebody, you Furious Charge them, they then get thrown in the air and get stunned for one second, and then you start bashing on them with your primary attack Lacerate, which is increased by the attack speed of Vithus as well. We also have Sprint in the build, which obviously makes you run faster. We got uh, Berserker's Rage, which gives you the additional crit damage or attack speed, depending on what you go with. And then we have Undying Rage as well. And then obviously we got Furious Charge and Lacerate. So first, let's go ahead and get into the Inheritances which if we look right here, we got Berserker's Sanity. Now, the reason why we go with Berserker Sanity is because basically it brings us out of crowd control. Now, one thing about Barbarians is you're always in the middle of the fight, right? You're never like fighting. Normally, you're not fighting in one-on-one -on -one situations. Most of the times you're fighting in like two or one v three, one V four, and you're basically tanking the points in PVP, right? So Berserker Sanity allows you to get out of some sort of crowd control. And that's what it reads here. Wrath the Berserker now also dispels effects, which cause loss of control of your character. So a lot of the times you really want to save Berserker Sanity whenever that character you're fighting gives you some sort of crowd control. That way you use Berserker Sanity, you then get out of that crowd control. And not only do you get out of it, you start bashing them at an insane attack speed right so that is that so let's go ahead and move on to trackers rage we have all damage you deal increased by 10 percent after after activating furious charge the reason why this is important for one it is considered a buff this extra increased 10 percent damage is considered a buff and therefore that procs your vithu's urge and it also procs your bottled hope and it, it is very nasty because also you get 10% extra damage once you use Furious Charge, which is your main scale, uh, skill to charge in there with Furious Charge, throw them up, then start hitting them with Lacerate, right? And then you get that extra 10% damage. Plus, you also get the Vithu's proc for 30% extra attack speed. And if Bottled Hope's not on cooldown, you also get the extra attack damage and also movement speed. So this is mandatory. Both of these two items are mandatory in the PvP build. This item, Broken Grafts, not really mandatory. However, I do think it gives you a little bit more survivability. There's only one other option you can go with, and I will show you guys that option as well. So we got Sprint also increases your dodge chance by 20%. Sprint cooldown is decreased by 10%. One thing you got to worry about is when you do use Sprint, you're also going to be proccing your Bottled Hope and also your Vithu's Urge which is a massive buff most of the time i use sprint if you guys played world of warcraft i basically use sprint as a insignia you guys know the insignia whenever you use your insignia it then brings you out of any type of crowd control well that is what sprint does as well with no inheritances you know some people do not know that so i needed to explain that as you can see right here upon activation movement impairing effects are removed so that means whatever effect you have you use sprint you then get out of that effect for example let's say you're in like a fear or you're in a jail or you're in any of those things that uh disables your movement speed you then you sprint you get out of it you start running real fast and you start smashing right also with this it just gives you a little bit more survivability the only other option you could go with is the coming storm which basically decreases the cooldown of wrath of the berserker which is very nice to have as well i honestly switch between the two and test them both out to try to figure out which one i like best and honestly i like them both i don't think you can go wrong with either one so as far as pants we got screaming fury this is what ch ch changes your furious charge into a knock up into the air which gives them a quick one second stun and you it does make it to where you can only have two charges of it and furious charge damage is increased by 10% so we have furious charge now charges to a location damaging all enemies and knocking them into the air so this right here is actually an AOE right so whenever we charge over whatever's in this circle gets thrown up in the air so if it's two guys or it's eight guys if they're all in that circle they all get thrown in the air so a lot of the times what you'll see 
me do in battle is if they're if if I'm on defense or offense, it doesn't matter. And there's a lot of people on the idle. A lot of the times I'll lead in with this, like right before they see me, because the Furious Charge does get blocked by other crowd controls, right? So let's say we charge in and another barbarian whirlwinds would then can break our furious charge to where the furious charge doesn't even happen. Or let's say we're fighting a necro and he throws up the bone pillar. Well then that disrupts our furious charge and literally waste an entire furious charge. It acts like you use it, but it doesn't actually do anything because it just gets disrupted along with a lot of other skills in this game, such as teleport, the shield for mages. A lot of things can get disrupted in this game to where you use the skill and it acts like you use them. However, you don't actually use them, right? All right, so let's go ahead and get into the next one. We got Rending Bite. Lacerate now inflicts bleeding that deals 10,000 damage over three seconds. So the reason why this is so freaking good is because this extra damage tick isn't actually the 9,796. This actually scales with your character. So on my character, it ends up being a lot more, and this ticks for like... I don't know, like 15 to 20,000 damage, and it is pretty insane as well because it leaves a bleed on the target. So when they try to get away, not only are they dealing with Lacerate, a lot of the times they're dealing with my Seep and Bile as well. So it's really two ticks that's ticking their life away at nonstop pace, and it's just overall extra damage for your weapon, right? There's nothing really else here with this current build that you would want to go with. Rending Bite is by far your best choice. We also have Broken Soul. Now this uh, changes Wrath of Berserker now increases critical hit chance instead of attack speed. I like critical hit chance a lot better because it brings your crit hit. I mean, my crit hit, I believe, is 14% on my barb. With this being used, it brings it all the way up to, I believe, 50% or actually around like 60%. I mean, I guess we can just double check right now. We see our crit percent chance is 14%. When we use Wrath of Berserker, when we go back in, our crit hit chance is now 57%. So Wrath of Berserker then brings your crit hit chance to 57% for quite a while and well worth using because that's when you bring out the serious damage and you go for those final killing blows, right? Now, in able to make this set work the most optimal way, you do need the Vithu's Urge set and you need it in a four piece. The reason why you need it in a four piece is because it increases the attack speed by 30% for three seconds each time you use a skill that either grants you a buff or your party member a buff, right? And so all these skills on your entire bar, all four of them proc Vithu's Urge, including your Furious Charge. And the reason why Furious Charge procs is because of your Tracker's Rage, which gives you that additional damage from your chest piece when you use Furious Charge, right? So whenever we Furious Charge in, you will see right here, we proc Bottled Hope. We also proc our Vithu's Urge, which you can see right uh why didn't it why didn't it proc right there sorry all right here it goes right here so there is the vithu zurge right there you can see the vithu zurge procs now we're going to use skill number two undying rage you will notice the vithu zurge procs from undying rage if we use skill three uh wrath of berserker you'll notice vithu zurge is back up there again now even when we use sprint Sprint gets proc'd. There it is again. Sprint, Vithu's Urge is back up. Now, basically, the point of having all four skills proc'ing Vithu's Urge is you're always rolling with 30% increased attack speed. Whether you charge in, you get that nice attack speed. Whether you use Undying Rage, you get that nice attack speed. Whether you use Wrath of Berserker, you still have that nice attack speed. And even if you use Sprint, you use that attack speed now remember use sprint as a utility to where you're either at the start of the battleground and you don't really need to get out of cc but i always save my sprint to get out of some sort of crowd control and this is basically the build that i'm going with as of right now i feel like it's very strong to not only be a really tanky build because you're using undying rage to be able to tank an unlimited amount of stuff plus you also want to use obviously the gladiator spec with this in paragon which is very helpful as well because all these match up perfectly with the current skills that I'm using. So all in all, I would say this is not only a tanky build, it also brings out a lot of DPS. I see a lot of barbs that are basically any any barb that wants to do dps this is the best way you're going to be dps it does do the most dps it doesn't matter your overall skill damage or your overall resonance none of that stuff actually matters to make your character the most optimal this is what you're going to want to go with as far as a pvp build now as far as being like the most tanky this might not be the most tanky build in the game however it does bring out some damage if you want to try a damage now as far as the other set that i'm using to give me a little bit more defense I am using a two-piece Mount Banks, which gives me a 13% uh, 
shield for 13% of my maximum life shield every nine seconds, which is pretty freaking beast mode as well, right? That just allows us to be insanely tanky, tanky and I feel like Mount Banks is absolutely broken. It is pretty beast mode. Anyway, guys, wanted to explain the setup. Hopefully this uh, did help you guys out and let you guys know exactly what I'm using in PvP, and this is the current setup. I do have other PvP builds that I am testing out as well, and I will be making videos on them shortly. Anyway, guys, hope y'all have a wonderful day. I am out of here for now. Peace out, fellas.